Hi, this video shows you how to do lambda and gamma in SPSS, and we've learned how to do cross tabs. So to do lambda and gamma, we just build off of that. We start here in the Analyze tab, and if you click on Analyze, then do you remember where we get cross tabs? Right here in Descriptive Statistics. So you go down to the cross tabs, and you're just going to click on cross tabs. Uh, and you're going to set your cross tabs up, and then you have options in here that will let you uh, see what lambda and gamma are for a relationship. So here I've done spanking and party ID. <clears throat> so party ID is in the column. That's uh, what is your political party or political identity, political party identity. And we're going to see if that predicts favoring spanking. This is do you favor spanking. So to do this, we just go into statistics. You click right here where it says statistics. And at that point, you have, as you can see, I haven't checked, uh, but it'll probably, you'll probably come into it like this because that's the default. Um, so you can check chi-square again, you can check lambda, and you can check gamma. And that's just going to compute these for you. So like most things in SPSS, doing uh, the equations that we've been learning, it's just a few clicks of a button, it will calculate it for you. Uh, still, it's very helpful for us to learn how to do those calculations because... If not, we find that students put things in SPSS and it'll spit out answers, so it'll give you something. Uh, but if, if you don't put it in the right way, uh, or if you do put it in the right way, but you don't interpret it the right way, it doesn't really work for you. Uh, SPSS isn't really a helpful tool. It may even hinder or, uh, or even make you look silly in a presentation if you just throw stuff in and spit it out and try to interpret it. So... Having you go through the process of learning how to calculate this by hand helps you see what you're doing. You put it in here to SPSS, and then when it spits out, hopefully we have uh, some good ideas about what's happening here, and we can describe it in a way that sounds very educated, impress our friends and colleagues. So if you remember, when we do these cross tabs, we also like to come to cells right here. So if you click on cells, you're going to percentage through the independent variable. In this case, what is the independent variable? I already had it checked off, so there's a clue. But it's party ID. In the book, they put uh, independent variable in the columns, and we do that in this class too, just for consistency with the book. And it makes sense that party ID is the independent variable because uh, you're unlikely, it's unlikely that some something else will change your party ID. Uh, if, it, if something else would, it maybe it would be religion or something like that. Uh, another very strong, very kind of core variable that people tend to not change uh, very much. So party ID, at least in the U.S., is pretty, pretty stable for the most part. It's kind of a core characteristic of a lot of people. So at any rate, we're going to interpret that as the independent variable here. We're not going to say that people's opinion about spanking will change their party affiliation. To me, that doesn't make as much sense, and I think to most rational people, it wouldn't make as much sense either. So, we've got our column percentages. We've got our lambda and our gamma. We also are doing chi-square for good measure. Then we're going to click OK, and that's going to give us our outputs here. And as you can see, this is the summary information up top. We have 1,649 in this analysis. It's pretty good. Uh, we have a bunch missing, which isn't so great. 35% missing. It's nothing very exciting. It's also not insurmountable. Uh, but at any rate, in this class, we're not quite as concerned about that. So here we can now interpret through the categories of our dependent variables. So here we have strongly agree that uh, you can spank your child to discipline them. So we have 196 uh, and as we work across here, in the Republic, strong Republican, we have 33.1. So we're comparing basically strong Democrat to strong Republican. They're trying to make sort of a continuum with independent in the middle, and then so it's kind of Rep Democrat to Republican, and then you have other over here. So it's not completely neat and clean ordinal, but there is some order here to this point. And at any, way, at any rate, we can see that Republicans tend to hover 19 to 22 percent, 
Republicans, 22, 26, up to mid-30s, low-30s. Uh, and if we come down to strongly disagree with spanking, we have Republicans around 8 to 12. I'm sorry, we have Democrats around 8 to 12. And we have Republicans between 3 and 6, so fewer disagree. So kind of the takeaway here is that Republicans tend to be a little more in favor of spanking to discipline a child. And we have the chi-square, value 65, 21 degrees of freedom. As you can see, this is a big table. You could still do the cover one, cover a column here, cover a column here. And the remaining cells would add up exactly to 21. Or you can use the row minus 1 times column minus 1 and would get 21 as well. Uh, so that's our chi-square. That's what we're familiar with. The p-value is 0, so it's, we would reject our null hypothesis in favor of the idea that there is a difference between Republicans and Democrats. And we have lambda and gamma. Now interesting, and, and you can kind of pick up on this in, in the book a little bit, it makes this point, but we have lambda value 0.002. It doesn't explain much of what's going on. Uh, favoring spanking doesn't tend to, uh, or I should say party doesn't tend to predict favoring spanking very very well according to this lambda. And the p-value is not very great, so we would fail to reject. And if we come back here to gamma, again we have a p-value of zero, so we would reject the null. So you can see that you're getting sort of different results depending on what method you do, and that's why these different methods exist, because people say, you know, like, uh, lambda has these certain weaknesses, um, if if you look through the independent variable and the modal category is always in the same row, then you're going to show no relationship with lambda. And that's one of the weaknesses of lambda the book talks about. And you can see some of that here that lambda is giving you a different result than gamma. Your job isn't to worry about that, especially in this introductory class. Your job is to know how to do these things, to put them into SPSS and to interpret them. So gamma, you know that lambda just gives you strength of the relationship and not direction. Gamma gives you direction, so we have negative 0.15. Uh, so we know that pol uh, political party explains about 15% of favoring spanking, and that there's an inverse relationship. It can be a little tricky to interpret that because we have, uh, it depends how they've set this up here, right? Uh, but Basically, the direction here is Democrat up to Republican. And uh, this, a lot of times in SPSS, is reverse coded with strongly agree 1 and, and strongly disagree 4 or something like that. So you really have to get in here and say, okay, as, as we go from Democrat to Republican, it increases, but we also have a decrease going from strongly agree to strongly disagree from 33 here to 3 here, and 19 here to 11 here. So really what's happening is that uh, as you move toward uh, disagree, you're more likely to be Democrat. Or as you move toward agree, uh, we see more Republicans. Uh, so that's kind of the inverse relationship they're talking about. Here it doesn't make it, like I said, it doesn't always make a ton of sense when we talk about an inverse relationship because is Democrat more than Republican? Is Republican more than Democrat? Uh, but what it, it does help us if you go into, and we're not going to do it for the sake of time in the video, and I don't push you too much to know how to do that in this class. I just want you to be basically familiar with these things. But you could go into your... Uh, variable view here and look up those variables and you can see how they're coded, right? So it'll tell you one is strongly agree and four is strongly disagree, whatever. And that would let you get uh, down to the heart of that. But hopefully this has given you at least a good uh, broad overview of how we do this and if you ever needed to run this you could. And uh, if you have any questions as always send me an email, let me know. And hopefully things are going well. I know you can do this. We're coming up on the end of the semester. And most of you have done a great job so far, giving your very best. Keep that strong attitude to the very end. And you'll see a good result.